Welcome to the newest episode of Beatin' and Bangin'. I'm your host, Kyle Dalton. In today's video, we're going to recap the weekend at Darlington and a date with the lady in black, including the comments from a very frustrated Richard Childress when talking with the media about Austin Dillon losing his final appeal, Kyle Busch offering his thoughts on the Parker Retzloff controversy from the week before at Daytona and effectively putting an end to it. Joey Logano making a surprisingly emotional admission about Harrison Burton, and an Xfinity Series race that added another sad chapter in the career of Sheldon Creed. And finally, we'll break down an entertaining final regular season race that saw Chase Briscoe become the latest first-time winner and add one final twist before completing the 2024 playoff picture. However, before we get to that, I want to start off September in style by giving away a prize to one lucky winner. And in honor of Briscoe winning last night at Darlington, I'm going to give away something from the last winner from Stuart Haas Racing, and that's this autographed Kevin Harvick helmet that I just got from the sponsor of today's video, Pristine Marketplace. As you've likely heard me say before, I love Pristine. These guys have an amazing selection of NASCAR memorabilia, including helmets like this, die cast, and some really, really cool art. I'm telling you, if you are looking for some good-looking, authenticated autographed items to add to your man cave or game room from NASCAR or any other sport, Pristine Marketplace is the place to go. They have a massive selection of items, and like I said, it's not just NASCAR. If you're a fan of the NFL, MLB, or NBA, both current and former players and the legends, they're likely to have something that's perfect for you. I got this Kevin Harvick helmet on my latest shopping spree. And the great thing is, you don't have to wait to see if you'll be the winner of this helmet. You can be a winner today by heading to their site, pristinemarketplace.com, and save $10 off of your first purchase. There's a code and link in the description. Please go show them some love and find that item from your favorite driver or player that's perfect for your man cave or game room. Now, on to our first story of the day, and it started during media availabilities on Saturday. You know, I'm always on the lookout for interesting things said by the drivers. This week, however, reporters had a chance to visit with Richard Childress, who wanted to share his thoughts on losing the final appeal for the number three car. And oh, did he have some thoughts. Take a listen. Their ruling has changed NASCAR racing on the final lap forever. The drivers now, they know where a line is, or they think they do. They don't, you know, if you go in a car length and two, three quarters was exactly how far back he was. And the other car slows down three mile an hour on the last lap, you're gonna bump him a little to get up and up the racetrack. Or is that over now? What is the, the line? And then if you go to uh, racing somebody off the corner and they get loose and get into you, then does that mean you're out of the chase? That's all I got to say about the ruling but it has changed racing for a win, for sure. It's hard for me to admit, you know, it's uh, an appointed appeal group and uh, it's tough to beat an appointment yeah. in anything. Over a million dollars to us yeah. is what it, what it boils down to, the largest fine ever in NASCAR. I'm just disappointed, disappointed, disappointed. That's all I can say. Wow, just wow. He said a lot. I'll just say, I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on how it changes NASCAR racing forever. And I'll get back to you guys on that. Moving on to our next story, but sticking with RCR, and specifically, Kyle Busch. The two-time champion was asked for his thoughts on what happened on that final lap at Daytona last week when Parker Retzloff and his number 62 Chevrolet pushed the number 21 Ford of Harrison Burden out to the lead. Busch was asked if Retzloff owed him an explanation or an apology. Unsurprisingly, Rowdy cut to the chase. Uh, not me, but um, I don't really know him all that well, so I don't know what sort of business relationships there are behind the scenes. Um, once upon a time when I owned a truck series team, we had other teams that we helped and we supported and we gave um, parts and pieces and uh, resources and, uh, and different things too. So um, I don't know how all that stems for his relationship with Beard behind the scenes. So. Um, yeah, not not to me. He didn't owe me nothing. Why, why not? Um, well, we have our Chevrolet team meetings, our key partner meetings, before the race, and he's not in one of those. So if you're not in one of those, then you should not be relied upon 
um, as a key partner to need to push and know the game that, that needs to be played. So um, that's how I look at it. I really do appreciate how candid Bush is and unafraid to share the behind the scenes details of Retzloff not being in those key partner meetings and how that influenced his perspective on the situation. That's important and has to be encouraging for the 21-year-old driver to hear. Resloff was just trying to win as Bush can totally understand and thought pushing Burden was his best chance to do it. It didn't work out, but as they say, that's just racing. Our last item from the drivers visiting with the media came when Joey Logano talked about Burden's first Cup Series win and just how much it meant to him personally after watching the young driver battle for the last three years without much success. I think that's why everyone was so excited to see him win last week. You know, there's not many, not many times in my career can I actually say I was like brought to tears of joy for watching someone else win, you know what I mean? And, and actually seeing that, yeah, last week and seeing Jeff in there with him, that was like one of the coolest things I've seen in our sport. Kudos to Logano for revealing his emotional moment. And he's right. This sport is full of cool moments. Moving on to qualifying, and there were two things of note. First, Bubba Wallace earned his first pole of 2024, and more surprisingly, Carson Hosevar sat on the outside of that first row. The Cup Series rookie has been impressive this year with four top tens, and his qualifying effort at Darlington was yet another moment confirming that he has a very bright future. And our last item before we get to Sunday's Cup race was the Xfinity Series race on Saturday, and yet another unfortunate chapter Sheldon Creed added to his career of near misses. Late in the race, the Joe Gibbs racing driver passed his dominant JGR teammate Christopher Bell and appeared to be headed for his first Xfinity win. The only thing that could stop it from happening was a caution. And guess what? A yellow came out with six laps to go. On the subsequent pit stop, Creed's crew had trouble with the right rear wheel and lost two spots. On the overtime restart from the outside of row two, Creed was at the mercy of the front row, which saw Bell out dual Cole Custer for the win. Creed, who finished third, was very dejected after the race and made a surprising admission. It's a bummer. I'm so proud of everyone at Joe Gibbs Racing on this 18 team, friends of Jacqueline, Toyota. I took a chance on myself, and, and we brought all the money we could. I'm literally not even making a dollar this year, so it just hurts when they get away like that, and especially here at one of my favorite places. We talked just a few minutes ago about how cool this sport can be. It can also be painfully brutal something that Creed is all too familiar with. And now let's move on to the Cup Series regular season finale, a pressure-packed race that didn't take long for the Lady in Black to strike, nabbing her first victims on lap three when Martin Truex Jr. drove it in hard into the corner, slid up the track, tapped William Byron, and then collected Ryan Blaney for a hard hit into the fence. It was a really surprising start to the race, especially from Truex, who called himself an idiot for the move. And the worst part was what happened to the reigning champ, apparently hurting his right arm. Here's what he said over the team radio. I have to kill, man. You okay? I think, I don't know. Oh, I'm hurt. And four, we'll get him to you as quick as we can. And you could see him paying extra attention to one of his hands and forearms. Blaney later told reporters he twisted his arm in the crash and said he'd be fine before next week's race at Atlanta. When the race resumed, Bubba Wallace ran up front and led for the first 34 laps before the first round of green flag pit stops. Kyle Larson's number five pit crew had a better stop and he came out in front and it was just the beginning of what would be the dominant car for the night. Right after those stops, Ty Gibbs showed a sense of humor and kept it light over his team radio. Dang, everybody's great to be so nice. This is so awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Look, I love my competitors. They're so nice today. Interestingly, the youngster's mood would take a dramatic swing in the opposite direction a short time later. With Larson in the lead, Tyler Reddick knew his battle for the regular season title was going to be tough enough already, but it didn't help that he was having stomach issues, and I mean really bad stomach issues. Take a listen to what he had to say to his team late in that first stage. Get some crackers or something to do, just plain crackers, I don't know, bread, something. Yep, we'll get you. Circling back to Ty Gibbs and his jovial mood, which quickly soured at the end of that first stage when he wasn't happy with how one of his JGR teammates was racing him. When these guys need help, they ain't gonna fucking get shit. I can tell you that. Any of my teammates. 
Kyle Larson won the first stage. Bubba Wallace finished second. During that stage break, the teams on the bubble were talking about playoff scenarios. Here's what was said on the number 23 team radio. You got nine points, 17 got one. The one guy's done. He's 22nd. So keep hammering. Good job. All I got is winning on the mind button. Don't give a shit about points. And for all well, I'll just keep you information. You keep your focus. I got you. Less information will be better. Appreciate it. Early in that second stage, Kyle Larson battled Chase Briscoe for the lead in what turned out to be a preview of things to come. Remember Ty Gibbs being unhappy at the end of that first stage? His frustration ramped up early in the second stage, and he was absolutely livid with Bubba Wallace. Um, I'm going to fucking wreck him in a second. I think he's driving like a dick. All right, listen to me. You got to set it up and time it up. You had a good runoff of four. You cannot blaze at the bottom of one, two, and put ourselves in a bad spot. Do the same thing. Inch your way there. It's going to be fine. I know it's frustrating. We just got to set it up. He's going to cut us no favors. All right. I'll cut him no favors. Just wait. He goes down there and tell us water. If he cut chops me like he just did to him, like he did to me, I will put him straight in the fence. I will not lift like I had to the last two times. You go tell Freddy. Tim Moody. The only guy will be in the wall. The second stage was much like the first, with Larson running in front. But it was Briscoe running in second, keeping the 2021 champ in sight and proving he had a car that might potentially challenge for the win. The entire 115 laps of the second stage went caution-free, but it didn't go without more drivers getting frustrated. Take a listen to what Kyle Busch had to say about his old pal Joey Logano late in the stage. Now, real quick, I want to give props to NBC for showing the cut line with live positions as Busher and Wallace battled for that final playoff spot. It was really interesting to watch the number changing depending on where the two cars were on the track. Larson won stage two and was followed by Briscoe, Hamlin, Byron, and Bell. Based on those first two stages, starting stage three, it felt like it was Kyle Larson's race to lose, especially with no cautions. It appeared pit strategy and deciding when to come in and put on new tires would be key in determining both the race winner and the playoff battle. And then, with 50 laps to go, Carson Hosevar brought out just the second caution for cause on the night. Things were about to get interesting. After having a slower pit stop on the previous green flag stop, Busher's team looked to improve on their stop during the caution. They didn't. All right. Uh, I got enough, man. We, uh... Honestly, fucked this up for you all night, or not all night, for the last few stops. So, uh, we're putting it on your shoulders here at this point. Uh, we're out at the moment. Everyone was understandably focusing on the battle between Busher and Wallace for that final playoff spot. But after last week and what Harrison Burton did at Daytona, I couldn't help but look at who was inside the top 10, including Briscoe and Bush and think we might have another first-time winner. After Hosevar brought out a second caution, the number 14 car flexed its muscle on the restart with 26 laps to go, pulling in front of Larson and taking the lead. Also of note, Kyle Busch restarted sixth and after a trip around the track, had moved up to third. In a race where the first two stages felt like they were caution-free because Truex's crash happened so early on lap three, the final stage more than made up for it, with a fourth caution that came in a crash that affected multiple cars, including Wallace, Gibbs, and William Byron. When the race resumed with 17 laps remaining, Chase Briscoe got a great start, surged out to the lead in front of Bell and Larson. But anyone paying attention couldn't help but notice what was happening from the inside of that fourth row, as Kyle Busch on three-lap fresher tires began quickly moving his way to the front. In those final 15 laps, the question was, could Bush catch, and more importantly, pass Briscoe? If I'm being honest, I was thinking how crazy it was that Bush was in this same situation he was last Saturday in Daytona, battling with an unexpected driver for their respective first wins of the year and trying to clinch a playoff berth. And just like it happened at the World Center of Racing, the two-time champ came up one spot short, with Briscoe pulling off the surprise win and locking himself into the playoffs. One thing of note that I thought was interesting was the team radio of Bush moments after finishing second because it included a bit of irony. Great job, man. Great job. Hey, I'm close. Great job, guys. Going to congratulate a Ford. Cool. I went back and rewatched the replay, and he was talking about Ross Chastain congratulating Briscoe. 
I thought it was ironic how Bush was not upset with Retzloff for pushing a forward to the win at Daytona, but he sure didn't like seeing what Chastain did with a blue oval car. And to add just a little more spice to the final regular season race, the very ill Tyler Reddick defeated Kyle Larson for the regular season title by a single point. Yes, one point. Larson's attempt at the double earlier this year could prove costly. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, guys, that's a wrap on this episode. We covered a lot. Let's start with media availabilities and let me know what you thought about Richard Childress's comments on losing Austin Dillon's appeal. Kyle Busch's remarks on Parker Resloff and Joey Logano shedding tears following Harrison Burton's win. And after that Xfinity Series race, do you think Sheldon Creed makes it to victory lane before the end of this season? And finally, let me know what you thought about the race. Were you as surprised as I think everyone was with Truex's mistake on lap three? And what about the finish? Did you think Briscoe would be able to beat Larson? I want to again thank the sponsor of today's video, Pristine Marketplace, and remind you to click on the link in the description so you can receive $10 off of your first purchase. And if you want to win this autographed Kevin Harvick helmet, all you have to do is leave me a comment that includes the letters HH for Harvick helmet. That's it, just HH. I'll select a random winner and announce it in next week's recap video from Atlanta. Thanks as always for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.